Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Peebler again. We're going to be going over um, the proposed um, chain of events and how we're going to go over the story. Um, this is proposed. Uh, it may change slightly here and there. Uh, I'm still kind of working on the order of how I'm going to do things and present these topics. Um, these topics will be covered in great detail. These topics will be um, really at a very high level um, and, you know, open for questions and discussion. Um, there may be spinoff videos that I do that are kind of at a lower level, but this is going to be um, at a fairly high level because I want to speak from uh, medical literature and the way that I do this. I want this really not to be, you know, Casey Peebler's uh, take on things. I really wanted to be guided by what's available in the literature. Now, of course, I'm going to present it to you in a way that makes sense to me, um, that I hope I can make it make sense to you as well. So the series that we're going to be talking about here is called mitochondrial redox. And it's going to be a, a whole series about what this is and how to improve it. Okay. And so, you know, the current format and the current layout of how we're going to tackle these subjects are going to be as follows. We're going to talk about, you know, one of the questions that I had um, while following one of my one of my colleagues, Dr. Jack Cruz, was was the sun dangerous or was it absolutely critical? for human health. And if you're a follower of his and a follower of mine, you're probably gonna have an obvious answer from us that it's definitely critical for human health. Doesn't mean that you can't be hurt by it. Doesn't mean that there isn't downsides to overexposure to it, but an underexposure to it, living an indoor lifestyle, um, is absolutely detrimental to our health. So the first part of this talk is going to be me going through medical literature, um, the prevalence of diseases, several diseases, common diseases, less common diseases, um, and the incidence of those disease, depending on your latitude, how high you are or far you are away from the equator and just your overall solar exposure. And when I went through this literature, I mean, I had a somewhat bias of what I would find and I figured it would be favorable, but what I found actually shocked me. And I hope that it has a very similar shock and awe towards you all, because I know that I, from a young age, you know, given the media and medical uh, powers that be, have scared myself and pretty much everyone I know to to basically fear solar exposure of any type. And I'm going to hopefully dispel a lot of those fears using relevant medical literature, not my own opinion. Um, the next topic will be basically a, a kind of a general crash course into what mitochondria are and how they are a very important uh, determinant of human health or human disease. That's going to take us into mitochondrial heteroplasmy. It's going to then take us into mitochondrial dynamics, a study of something called the respirosome or the mitochondrial supercomplex. Then we're going to get into the nitty gritty of what mitochondrial redox actually is, basics, and later advanced topics within the you know uh, reactive species. That could either be reactive oxygen or reactive nitrogen species. Mitochondrial hom uh, calcium homeostasis, or the balance of calcium uh, within a cell and within a mitochondria. 
how the balance gets upset to favor disease. That's something that is colloquial known as oxidative stress. How the body regains balance and fights to maintain redox homeostasis. The topic of oxidative phosphorylation uncoupling and its purpose. The topic of hypoxia, low oxygen levels, or pseudo hypoxia. Then we dive in hardcore to uh, the way that your body fights back um, and particular details of how that happens using ultraviolet light, how vitamin D ties into that story, circadian biology, melatonin, palm C, red and infrared light, earthing or grounding, how diet ties into the story, exercise, cold thermogenesis, deliberate cold, thermo cold exposure, um, several different names for the same thing, a very interesting chemical called methylene blue, and then redox specific supplements that are available. And then later we'll talk about EMF, electromagnetic frequencies, and blue light mitigation strategies, which will be covered in detail earlier on about how they damage the body in terms of redox. So as you can see so far, this is gonna be a very comprehensive um, discussion and video series. I don't know how long it'll take to get through it. Each one of these topics has many, many slides um, and a lot of detail. There's hopefully going to be uh, after video release discussions of all these topics and you know, potentially further rabbit holes we can jump down or questions that we can get into in a more specific fashion. And at the end of the day, you're going to have education on how to maintain human health, not only prevention, but reversal of disease. Uh, and as you're going to see throughout this series, mitochondria are the key, the linchpin of human health. And we're going to dissect that. And you're going to see how it affects every single known disease that we have a diagnosis for especially the top diseases such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, autoimmunity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, you name it, pain, et cetera, all related to this process. And we're going to learn how to how it breaks down and how to take care of them. And you're going to be empowered, God willing, uh, how to do this. And this will bring up relevant topics for you and your friends, your family, and between you and your medical provider about how to achieve these goals. I hope this is a good overview. I hope that uh, you like where we're taking this and stay tuned because there's going to be a lot more. Mm -hmm.